Hi there, hope everybody's keeping well. I'm going back to the old school now. This is the first ever Intel NUC model. This was released back in uh, 2013. Um, not even an i3, not even an i5, not even an i7 processor. It's a Intel 847. This particular model is the DCCP 847DYE. Now what I want to do with this particular model is upgrade the components. I can give it more RAM, um, preferably 8 gigabytes. It can handle 16 but I'm just going to do 8. It's only got a tiny SSD and SATA in at the moment so I can go, going to definitely upgrade that probably to 128 gigabytes. Um, be also good to give it uh, Bluetooth and Wi-Fi capabilities. You know, uh, give it a distribution of say Linux, Ubuntu and just see how it flies. Okay, let's try it out. So once we've loosened those four screws, um, use your thumbnail or fingernail or credit card would do and just gently work your way around the base. Let's look at the state of that. Work your nail varnish if you wear nail varnish. Just gently lift the lid off see what's under the bonnet. Oh, what have we got here? So we've got two sticks of DDR3 memory. Now on the listing it said there were four gigabytes, so that's two sticks of two gigabytes. Kingston memory. So I'm just going to pop these out. I mean, for Linux, I think four gigabytes would probably be okay. But as I'm going to do lots of database work and code compiling, I want as much RAM as I can get. Um, so I've got two sticks of four gigabytes here. Um, got these quite cheaply actually. They're only five pounds a stick, which I thought was a bargain. So I'm just going to pop those both in. Let's make sure <laughs> that weird cable is getting in the way. That's better. That's clicking in. And this one here. Okay. So this is the SATA. It's an M SATA. Only 30 gigabytes, I mean, you're not going to fit a Windows installation in there or an upgrade. So, I'm not too bothered that it's Linux, but I want it a bit beefier, I want some storage, really, if I'm doing a large database work. So, I'm just going to whip this out, just undo the screw, it should pop out. That's a screw safe. Don't want to lose that. Very good at losing screws. So, yeah. Put that to one side. Uh, if I've got another project going, I could probably use that. But this one, better show you here actually. Even though you've got uh, two slots here, this top one is for the MSATA. And this bottom one here is for a Wi-Fi card. Um, it's quite short, so you wouldn't fit anything else in there, I don't think. But I had a trawl on eBay, and I found this. This is a old Intel Bluetooth and Wi-Fi card. I'm a bit concerned, though, because if you look closely where the antenna fits. Seems to be a bit of damage there. These two weird cables, if you were wondering, 
are actually uh, antenna. So both of these lugs will fit onto those air wheels. It's a simple way to do this. Uh, that one's popped on, that's good. Makes a satisfying popping noise. And this other one. Yeah, that's on now. So I think my concerns about uh, the connectors were confounded. Cool. Okay, push that down. Let's see if that's a good. That doesn't seem like it's pushed in far enough, but. Hopefully it will be okay. So, I've seen neater, but that will have to do. So just pop the insert in, fold it down so the hole's over the screw column and there that's secure and I've got that Wi-Fi card connected to the antenna okay so yeah, hopefully that's all the assembly. So upgraded it, it's now got 8 gigabytes of RAM. It's now got um, 128 gigabyte MSATA SSD in. Considerable upgrade and it should now have Wi-Fi and Bluetooth capacity, even though it does have an Ethernet port. So. I can now seal that up. So what's the best way to do this? I'm guessing that weird, it's almost like a sticky fixer type pad goes over the MSATA drive. So there's no arrow to tell me which way up it goes. So I'm just going to tighten the screws now. And we can play about with Linux operating systems. Hopefully the CPU will work. Um, this particular model has only got a very weedy Celeron 847. Which is why you have uh, 847 in the middle of the name. Um, it was released in 2013. It's only got a 2 megabyte cache only gives you 1.1 gigahertz uh, only two cores so I'm under no illusions uh, about this really it's gonna be a chugger um, but hopefully a reliable chugger I'll show you something else I don't like about this particular model um, don't if you can see these grills here if this uh, aluminium chassis or is it steel, slides up. It really bends back these metal grills and it just looks ugly. Right, so I've hooked up a mouse keyboard, HDMI cable. I've popped in a USB uh, booting stick. Um, I've installed Ubuntu um, Unet booting I use to actually create that particular one and the power so we're all good to go but I'm going to before I hit the power switch switch 
I'm just going to start tapping F2. I can hear the fan starting. Uh, Intel and we're straight into the uh, BIOS. So that's basic input output system. Bridge between the hardware and the software. So that's good. We can see our SanDisk uh, USB. We can also see our uh, MSATA our LAN. So that's good. So I'm going to go into advanced setup. Just check a few things. Okay, legacy boot. UEFI boot. Might be just magical thinking, but I'm going to deselect that. Let me know if that makes any difference. I haven't really worked it out. So that's good. So I'm just going to double click from the USB one. Do you wish to boot USB? Yep. So I'm going to use the keyboard arrow. Try Ubuntu without installing. So now I've finally got Ubuntu all configured the way I want to. Good news is I've got Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. That seems to be working straight off the bat. That's the beauty of Ubuntu. It seems to recognise all the hardware. Um, even has sort of proprietary drivers, which is nice. Now, the two main uh, programs I wanted to get going was IDLE, so I could uh, code with Python. I've also got installed XAMPP or LAMP, it seems to be on Ubuntu. I've even created a shortcut um, on the desktop. So obviously for what I'm doing I need to uh, start Apache, start my SQL database which is started. I'm using uh, Firefox, seems to be the uh, out of the box web browser but it seems to behave quite well. So I'm straight into a database I was playing around with. Quite a big database actually, so uh, almost, uh, yeah, 4.4 gigabytes. Seems to be working. I haven't had any problems with memory yet. CPU is slow, but I expected it to be slow. So it's not too bad at all, really. So that ancient processor does the job. So now we've upgraded the box and everything's running fine and dandy. What are my observations on this project? Was it worthwhile? Well, it was a very cheap setup to do. Um, the actual model cost me less than £50. Um, as I said, it was £5 per memory stick. £7 for the Wi-Fi Bluetooth card, another £7 for the SSD. So a very cheap setup and what I like about this device is it's reliable. It's quiet, relatively low energy. If you have a script that would take a long time to run, you can just set it up, leave it running in the corner of your desk and forget about it. Then when you come back to it a few days later, you know, it won't have restarted, it wouldn't have crashed. It would just quietly keep ticking over. It wouldn't surprise me if you could leave it running for a year and just sort of reboot it, you know, for every decade or so. So very reliable. It's not the fastest, but think of it as the slow cooker of the computing world. You know, it's not a hair. It's a tortoise and it's bound to win some races. So, as always, thanks for watching. See ya.